Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I'd like to present a project to you that I've been working on. It's called SAF Bench or SAF Bench if you like. The project is a multi-platform OpenGL benchmark. It currently supports uh, Windows 98, Windows NT 4.0 and it should work on most Windows versions up to Windows 10. It also supports Mac OS Classic. It uh, supports IRIX for SGI machines. It supports uh, Digital Alpha for Windows NT. I decided to release SAF Bench into the public domain with the source code. I could have made it open source, but uh, yeah, I'm happy enough to just be the creator of it. I don't really feel like I need to own it. The source code being available to anyone to change and modify obviously means that it can be ported to more architectures and operating systems, which is a good thing and the whole point of a SAF Bench. Multiple platform support obviously means we can start comparing different machines that run different operating systems and completely different architectures like MIPS, Alpha, PowerPC and x86 for example or operating systems like IRIX, Mac OS Classic, Windows, Linux even and so on. The code is written in C++ and this is my first like big major project I've done myself. Everything is done by me and the only dependency is really glut. Uh, but I do have to point out that I'm actually dyslectic so my biggest problem with that, I do have an official diagnosis and my biggest problem is actually remembering how words are spelled and so on. I have a little bit of problem reading, but it's not that big, I can read most things. But uh, remembering something, so it's a lot of notes, a lot of always reading up on stuff because I can read and then I have to try to transfer that before. Well, before it uh, becomes impossible because I can't remember stuff very easily. So very long, my short term memory is kind of crap there actually. So that said, my code is very spaghetti. It's very messy at the end here because I really felt like I took on too much work, too much water over my head at the very end. It first it seems fine, but then it just dragged out and became a lot more difficult than I expected. But yeah, learning to program is one way I figured I could teach my brain to be a little bit better at languages. And uh, I did the same thing back over 20 years ago, decided to go with Linux, uh, Slackware 8.0 for my router and then 8.1 for my main rig. Just to teach myself uh, to use the console, languages, etc. It took about two months to get sufficient enough that I didn't have to ask all my friends for help that knew how to how to use Linux and they were also developers and programmers back then. So that said, that's like a disclaimer and you shouldn't use my code to learn how to program, but you're free to fix it because it's like I said, spaghetti. When you start SAF benchmark, you'll be greeted by main menu and you have four buttons there, benchmark, demo, settings and quit. So benchmark will run one loop of the benchmark, give you a score. It will also indicate a resolution on the dial below the analog dial. It's kind of an afterthought, so it's not perfect. It's more there to give you some indication if you take a screenshot, for example, for yourself or to share with others, so you can kind of see the resolution. It will indicate valid resolutions from 320 by 240 up to 1280 by 1024. If you're running non-standard resolution on the height or width or both, the respective needles will move to just past the 6 o'clock position to indicate that. And the reason is that I hard-coded in uh, common resolutions because the scale isn't like linear. The digits are placed where they fit, so to speak. Now, if you have a resolution past uh, 1280 by 1024, so for example, if you're running on a modern computer, say, 2560 by 1440, it will move bo both needles to the red area. Now, if you actually want to know your resolution you got, you can open a file that it will generate called score.txt in the folder where you have the execute table. And uh, it will append, uh, so basically every time you run a full benchmark, it will just add the new score below the previous one, so you can save your scores for all eternity, I guess. 
the next button is obviously the demo button and uh, the difference between that and the benchmark is that when you're running a demo mode you're it's gonna loop forever for one so it's uh, so you can use it for demonstration purposes on a machine for example on an exhibit or something if you want it just to run day in day out also you're free to change the resolution so you can hit the f button for full screen toggle that on and off you can also use escape to exit uh, full screen escape will also in both benchmark and demo take you back to the main menu and will also kill the program if you're in the main main, main menu you can also use the plus and minus buttons to, on the keyboard to uh, change resolution to the ones you can find in uh, settings which we're gonna look at or you can use to reshape the window any size you want this does not work in benchmark mode because we want the benchmark to run at a fixed resolution. So in the settings menu you can change the resolution before you run say a benchmark or demo. And it's mainly mainly for the benchmark mode as once you set it there and run the benchmark that's, one, that's what they're gonna stick to. So you got valid resolutions from 320 by 240 up to 1280 by 1024. And full screen option is borderless full screen window at desktop resolution. So if you have a modern PC, like I said, uh, say 1080p, something like that, it will run at that. So if you want to build uh, a version of uh, uh, SAF Bench for your operating system and hardware, you're going to have to download this file here, which I will put uh, in the description of uh, the video. So it's called Softbench uh, version 1.3 complete public source uh, is, the, is what the name implies there. It might change un with the, uh, until the final video comes out. Uh, I had updated the version twice since I started filming because of I, bugs I found. But anyway, that's the current one. So I just want to strike it uh, here. And we're on Windows 10 here, but I got Visual Studio 2005 installed, which Windows 10 really hates. Microsoft really wants you to buy something new. But the advantage with this one is that it compiles Windows 9x compatible binaries. So I got this folder here. It's empty now, but that's what the project will spit out the XE. Uh, so if you run this soft underscore bench VC project file here. We're actually in the project here, so we can see the source files, resource file that's for the icon. Uh, they had the files there, so you can go to build. You can do clean if you want, but the folder was already clean. So to build, it's fairly fast. We got one successful build, no failed, and so on. So we can really close this now. But if you want to edit, say modify something, you can just go to say this one. It's the main product file. Anyway, so we can close this now. So we should have a file in here now called sof underscore bench.exe. So you can copy that and then go back here a bit. I got bin here, I got my folder here, I paste it in here. So here I got the textures from for the program that is included with the like the full version of the program. And then I got the glut uh, 32.dll, so that's the glut library you need. I will also put up a uh, like a zip file with different version of this that you might need but they are included with the, the actual program they're ready to run ones already pre-compiled ones so we can just run that and it works so that's how you build this for say windows 98 this will work on windows 98 now if you want to build saf bench for say alpha or something else using visual studio 6 you can open uh, the softbench.dsw file here and go to build. It's made clean there to make sure I don't have any little files around. But say now you're building for something else, x86 or say uh, MIPS, you want to go to configuration there and add a new one and you can uh, change the name of the configuration then you can just select copy settings from uh, the old one there and it should uh, set up the proper CPU settings and stuff like that so you can actually select, the pro uh, select that profile and build with it. But if you are alpha, you just select build uh, project there and it will compile. So we are compiling here on an EV56 600 mesh. Got zero errors and 34 warnings. So we're closing VC6 here and we're going to and we're going to the SAF underscore bench folder here uh, with 32 underscore AXP. 
copying the saf underscore bench.exe here to, uh, to a folder that already has a file with overwriting here to, just for demonstration purposes. We got the glut32.dll here also compiled for alpha. Uh, we'll have a collection of libraries uh, in a separate file posted in the description of the YouTube video. I just took up the CPU, the other task I had to check the CPU usage. It's indicating 100%, but it's not particularly CPU heavy really, mostly the GPU here. But as you can see it runs, and it runs pretty poorly, but that's the Permedia too, it's so slow. It's, uh, it's so slow, it's often fast, it's actually do rendering on, in software on the CPU. For Linux use, you could open this file, and I'm gonna get this here. So this is just G++ and the different files that need to compile the linking here. And it will spit, spit out and the Linux binary in uh, this folder here, which is obviously here. And if you're on IRX, you can uh, use that script here. And it's this script here. And you get your binary in here. You obviously need glut or free glut installed on the system and you need the textures, these ones in the same folder. There actually should be another file in here for IRX and this will be included with the like the pre-compiled version. So if we open up a notepad, but basically this turns off vsync. Uh, I did try to turn it off in the program. I managed to do it in Linux, no problem, also Windows. And Mac doesn't seem to even use vsync, at least not when I tested it now. So this turns off vsync. So you can run the program without this script, but this script will start. Uh, it will start softbench on IRX with vsync turn off, basically. So you actually get like the most performance out of your graphics card. Now, if you want to build SAF bench for Mac, you need Code Warrior 8, and uh, you can unpack the source with the uh, stuff it should be do it. Once you have the source unpacked, there is a file called Mac OS Classic .sit. I'm going to need to unpack that too. And it's packed as a sit file to keep the file attributes uh, for macOS. You have a file called sub underscore bench that uh, you need to open with the uh, Code Warrior 8 if you want to open the project. So I'm running Code Warrior 8. And then we're going to open the project here. And there we got it. SAF bench. So I'm going to open that. And that is the project open. So here are the files, very similar to Visual Studio in that regard. And yeah, we can check for changes, there were some changes. And we can compile it. We're gonna get some uh, warnings, but shouldn't get any errors. So 36 warnings there. We can close it or run it, but I'm just gonna close it here. And we can see the SAF bench popped up there in the left window already. So I'm just going to replace the old one here, the old file, the new compiler one, and we are going to run it. So it's worked uh, reasonably well this time. There are some bugs with uh, macOS. It's probably the most difficult OS to port to ahead. It doesn't always start properly. I just get the black screen sometimes and I have to restart uh, macOS. I don't know why. It's a bit buggy. A lot of the bug fixes were for macOS. Now I'm gonna ask for a favor. I usually don't ask people to subscribe and so on. And that's because I do these videos because I want to, not because I want to make a lot of money. And I don't make a lot of money. I make about $2 per video the last 11 to 12 months. Before then I make, made nothing because I didn't qualify. Uh, I do like the super tank feature that YouTube has. They, they will give the creator, me, 70% of whatever is donated. So a dollar donated is uh, about one third of my ad revenue per video, which is around two dollars, since YouTube takes 30%. So if you ever considered uh, donating using the Super Tanks button, I would appreciate it. But it's not a must or anything I demand, obviously. I also don't care if people use ad blockers on my videos. 
because, well, ads are annoying. But uh, the reason I'm asking for a voluntary donation is that it does help me make videos. So, so like the Pension 2 series, I earned like $8.90 and uh, I did spend uh, my first YouTube paycheck of around $70 or somewhat less than that. Yeah. On that and I was half the budget of making those four or five videos. So yeah, any donation helps uh, me getting videos out there sooner rather than later. So now let's continue with the video. With the source I did include assets, so GIMP files for the textures, Blender files for the models. So that's the big plane, the TU-95 bear, and uh, the interceptor, the Saab J-35 Draken, which uh, translates to dragon in English. So you're obviously free to use those uh, in other projects or modify them if you want and so on. They are included. You will find all these uh, different fil files in the asset uh, folder in the source. For the people who just want to run the program, you're gonna have to download uh, this file here. Uh, SAF Bench uh, version 1.3. It's gonna be in the description of the video down below. Download link. It's gonna put that on the top. That's what most people are gonna want. So you can extract it here just to check what's the co what the content is here. But basically it contains all the versions, so IRIX here. So you have to unpack this on your IRIX workstation if you have one. And macOS, you got the zip file here, same there. It contains all you should need. This is for alpha for Windows NT. So we can look in that for example. So you got your docs folder with your license. So it just basically states that it's in public domain. And if you do something with it on YouTube, for example, it would be nice if you send some people my way, but uh, it's not a must, obviously, since it's public domain. And this is the manual. And it could be worth reading. It has some information that could be important, and some known bugs and some information. And then, uh, obviously, the textures here. All of them contains that folder, obviously, and the doc folder. And the respective execute table. Some of them have the glut library, if they need to. So with IRX and UNIX, you usually have to install that into your package menu. And this is the one that people are mostly going to use, the Windows uh, 32 x86 version. So yeah. But I included all of them in one packet instead of having four links figured. They are, they are like two megabytes each or something compressed. And yeah, then we got, uh, for the people who want to develop, might want this. I'm just gonna extract it here. Extract it, uh, it's a glut, uh, I call it glut libs. It contains uh, different things, like for macOS here, OpenGL. You might want that for your code warrior, for to actually be able to compile it. Uh, you can obviously source it yourself if you don't already have it. I uh, have source for a glut original versions, 2.6, 2.7, 2.7, 2.7, 7, 6. Um, you can compile it yourself. We you can use for this window for AXP. So I think this one I found on some old FTP server ages ago. And this one I think I compiled a few years ago on my alpha before, before the alpha hard drive crashed. I uh, should say so in it. Yeah. So you can use either version. I think the one I sent with my program for alpha was my own compiled version. And obviously the Win32 versions, and a couple of versions here. And some readme. But these are it's mostly relevant people who want to develop. And if you're using modern OS and compiling on there for to run your modern system, you're just gonna use Freeglot, obviously. You don't really need to care about this. This is mostly for legacy. So I think that's it for the files. There are a few bugs, so for some reason with a TNT card with 16 megabyte of frame buffer. I cannot run 1280 by 1024. It will just hang the program. So you could push the plus button until you get to that resolution and it just hang. Uh, unless you're running 16 bit color then it will work. But the thing is on my Permedia 2 that has 8 megabyte of frame buffer I can't even force it to try to do that. We just not do it. So it seems to be something with the TNT or the NVIDIA drivers for that particular card. The drivers itself with GeForce 3 works fine, but that has 
plenty of VRAM. I also had some issues with the Matrox G400 Max or certain 32 bit color result in either 16 bit color or 16 bit texture. I don't know which, but it renders as if you have either of those, it would look the same. If set 24 bit color to the desktop, it will render as if you have 16.7 million colors, but it will run in slow motion. And either you run 16 bit or 32 bit color, it will just. Uh, it will rubber band and things like that. It's kind of weird on that card for some reason. I don't know why. And on Mac, oh, Mac uh, OS Classic, I have this issue, at least on my system, but I have uh, shared some of my demo with other people that had Mac OS. I haven't complained about it, but I, a lot of time get a black screen where it doesn't render in the window, the OpenGL window. That's kind of annoying, but I don't know how widespread that issue is if you just uh, with my GeForce 3 card. I also don't know if VSync will work properly with the ATI card, for example. It seems like VSync is off by default with my GeForce 3 card on macOS. So that's some of the issues. And also, I, I do support on modern PC up to 21 by 9 ratio. I made a demo so it will look proper up to that. It's technically 43 by 18, and 3440 by 1440 that I run. So on a modern PC, you can run up to what's considered ultra wide, but I, I don't support we didn't make it to look proper, let's say 32 by 9 or something extreme like that. So some things to think about. So the problem isn't perfect, it definitely has some issues, some graphics cards, some drivers and uh, some operating systems. Uh, but uh, the source is there for you to fix, I get my spaghetti code. And I think a lot of it on the old system is just the old version of GLUT is kind of buggy. Uh, the newer version of a free GLUT works much better. It uh, remembers things like Windows position of the full screen. Uh, that does not happen with the old GLUT version on any OS that I tested so far. So I had to write code to remember that, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's a bit annoying. So when you benchmark, uh, it's actually advantageous to run in full screen. So I decided 800 by 600 is the default resolution, and that will be in a window mode. But if you set your desktop to 800 by 600, 32 bit color, it's actually faster to benchmark uh, by selecting full screen because then the program will run at that uh, resolution, your desktop resolution. And uh, on my Premiere 2 was by, was around 32% faster doing that compared to running a desktop resolution of 1024 by 768. So, so it's uh, from a benchmark point of view, it's advantageous to run a full screen if you can, but not all systems support that, like IREX. Uh, it's 1280 by 1024 by default is your desktop resolution. You can lower it uh, a notch, but the actual desktop will still be that higher resolution. So you have to like pan around. But that's uh, just uh, something to think about if you're looking for uh, compare uh, to compare. So you could either decide uh, maybe to run all your systems at the same desktop resolution of full screen or the same uh, desktop resolution and the same window size. So for example, with my Permida 2, I can't run 1280 by 1024 at 32-bit color. It just doesn't have enough VRAM for it with 8 megs. But my IREX system runs that at 32-bit color by default because it has 13.5 megabytes of frame buffer for colors alone and then another 4 megabytes for textures, so 17.5. So that's worth thinking about. So we're very close to the end of this video, but before we end, we should look at some benchmark scores because that's the whole point of a benchmark program. So I decided to bench all the systems that were used in this video, in the make empty video, and a lot of them were used for testing and sometimes compiling software. So when people ask me in the comment section what I do with all these old systems, well, a lot of them runs 24-7 uh, sometimes for days. Uh, just uh, stress testing. I forgot the P12 built uh, on uh, my addict for like two days before I remembered to turn it off. It was still running, it's fine. Overclocked CPU, overclocked uh, TNT with my benchmark program. That's kind of nice. But anyways, so at the top I put the fastest system, which is a dual Pentium 3, 1 gigahertz overclocked to 1095 MHz with a GeForce 3 Ti200 overclock to e 3 speeds. It's not fully stable at that speed, but it's fine as long as you don't use fancy features, which you don't do, like uh, programmable shaders. 
And the reason I overclocked that was just to match the GeForce 3 Ti 200 having my Mac that is hardware and software modded to a GeForce 3 and it has 500 megahertz RAM, so it's fine. Runs fine at uh, even the most demanding settings. And those are basically neck, in, neck to neck. I actually had a little bit high score initially, but I forgot the screenshot, so the score I put down here is the one I screenshotted. And below that we have a K62 Plus system with a GeForce 2 Pro, it's stock. And you can say it's not as fast as E4C, obviously, but you can see it's clearly beating out Atalon here. The Atalon is much faster, it runs DDR at almost 300 MHz, it's a pretty fast system for sub 1 GHz. But uh, you can see like a, like a trend here that the CPU doesn't matter that much, it's more up to the graphics card. So it depends on two. It might, I don't think at 450 MHz is faster than the K62 Plus, but... Uh, uh, if if it had the same graphics card, it would be much much closer to the K62 Plus. And then we almost at the bottom here got the Dual MIPS R12 12K CPUs at Merge with the very basic, the most basic graphics card you can have in in an SGI Octane. So they call it SI. I got the Tira module, so that's why it's called SI plus T. And the chipset is called Impact. So yeah, very slow. Uh, so we bottleneck by the graphics card even on that one. It's so got 20.1 FPS here, so this is frames per second. And the bottom we got the alpha, and that CPU compiles much faster than say the MIPS 300. So this, this CPU is actually fairly fast. In Quake 2 it runs about 30% CPU usage with this per meter 2 at, eight, at like 320 by 240. And it's overclocked from, I don't remember, like 80 some megahertz stock to 98. And it still only scores 12.3, and this is in full screen. It scores something like 9.3 if you run 1024 by 768 win, uh, desktop and then a window at 800 by 600. So you can see I've set full screen on some here. And uh, on some it actually says like uh, window and then the resolution for the desktop. So you gain a bit by running full screen, like I said. Uh, but I. I not doing exactly Apple stack builds comparison here, but uh, yeah. But this is how this program could be used to compare different architectures. So we got uh, Alpha, and we got uh, x86, and we got MIPS, and then we got PowerPC. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video. All the links will be in the description so you can download the software. So there will be one for just the software, one for the source, and then one for libraries. And there might be some bonus uh, at some point, point with some old programs I made that are based on this code. Or well, this code is rather based on that. But we'll see. But that's it for this video. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members' private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels, where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.